Hello, my name is Curtis Pickford, and I am the director, producer, writer, editor of this uh, whole shebang here. It took about a year and a half for me to put this whole thing together, and just because we didn't have all the equipment when I was writing it, and nobody really wanted to be a part of it, and they all were working on their own projects, and they wanted to get theirs done. The score itself, uh, I did th uh, three years prior to making this film, actually. I don't know, maybe even longer than that. I've just been trying to find a perfect film to use it in. And I finally got it just set for this one. Which turned out really well. And the conversation right here with the walkie-talkie, uh, Scott Falls and Alan Smithy right there, are both voiced by me. J just this conversation. All I did was fix the pitch of their voices, so because Jimmy wasn't around at the time. And when I'm talking right here, if you listen very closely, if you couldn't tell before, um, like with each one of my lines, uh, there's like a sort of a deeper sort of growlish type of voice that's coming through and it gets louder and louder with each line. Throughout the whole film, having this sort of bright, black and white, raster sort of look, it was just perfect. I just wanted it to be just right. I didn't want anything to be too bright. I didn't want anything to be too dull. I just wanted the lighting to be just right. And two of these actors were actually from my TBA class, and he's actually, he was sort of a last minute actor to ask. I was too crammed up and everybody else was gone. Recording his voice was a pain. I had to capture it on the little shotgun mic we had on the camera. The device we had wasn't working, so we had to reshoot the whole thing. If you'd provoke the ghosts in a way and you could tell them they would get pissed, it was not a happy thing. Did Scott ever get possessed? No, he was more demanding and provocative than any other ghost hunter I've ever seen. Did Scott ever have anger issues? No, he just liked to be mad for fun. It's kind of pretty funny if you've known him as long as I have. How did you react when you heard the news? I was devastated. Scott was like a brother to me. I'd known him since the second grade. Frank told me that Scott was like a brother to him. Did you feel the same way? Well, he dated for like six months, but after a few weeks, we became just close friends. It is January 8th of 2007. The computer in the background right there behind me, it was uh, way too bright when I was fixing the lighting and everything. It was just way, way, way too bright. So I had to dim it down a little bit. And you can see part of my shoulder, part of my shoulder where the square is, you can actually see that it's a little darker than everything else. Because I had to dim the computer. And the voices right there, the two sets of voices, those are actually me. And I just put a lot of effects into those turned out really well, better than I thought they would be. I actually got a lot of help from Scott Tompkins from the TBA class, who was my instructor. He, I actually got some advice from him, uh, debating whether or not he can understand what he's saying and read it and hear it at the same time. And now we're on our way to the uh, Calcastro Church of Christ, where the uh, disembodied voice uh, described in the EVP. And we're going to talk to the pastor who has been working there for... Uh, a couple years, at least, uh, at least. <laughs> 
10 to 10 to 15 so here it is you can see right there that was a fade I faded that because, well, the lighting before we entered the parking lot was just right, and then we got into the parking lot. You couldn't see the church at all. It was just way too bright. And then uh, we also had a couple cars exiting the parking lot. We had to reshoot that part. I had to dim the lighting down a bit. I don't think it's anything that anyone should be worried about. It's been harmless. And the sound you were just hearing were uh, people uh, setting up the Kalkaska pageant. They, they're wondering if they were going to be too loud. I'm like, no, 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 don't, don't worry about that. You guys going to keep going. And... I didn't really, I didn't really mind the noise as long as nobody was in the shot. Right there is Dylan Frazier. He's uh, one of the band members actually for the uh, Kalkaska Church of Christ. He's a really nice guy. He was open enough to help me out with this project, and he's actually helped me out with uh, another project. With a, uh, I actually had to ask for his permission to use some photos from uh, Facebook so I can just use a uh, family in a uh, We're on Our W, which is another short film I made quite some time ago. And you, you didn't call the police at all. I didn't think there was any need to. He wasn't, you know, causing any harm to the church. Uh, if he ever did, I would have called the police. We've got several cameras on the ceiling, and there's one back This here. is another example of having uh, what's too bright and what's too dim. The, uh, the lighting right here is just perfect. The walls are actually just pure white. There's a lot of audio in this interview with the pastor right here. Is, uh, I really wish I kind of had it edited out. I, I should have caught it earlier, but uh, a lot of stuff I should have edited out that I didn't. I just noticed later on I should have fixed it a little bit. actually see a shadow. We've captured a shadow walking up and down these stairs. So you find these, you find this to be normal now? Like, at all? No. Um, you know, the last time it happened was on the 10 year anniversary. This is where most of the events happen. Yeah? Yes. Uh, actually, when the people come to, that come down here to work and rehearse, they'll, all these windows and doors would be open. Everyone? Every one, you know, and we don't have a camera that points in this direction, but uh, sometimes we can hear footsteps going across the stage like someone's trying to rehearse. And we think um, when he must be getting frustrated or angry, uh, he stomps on the floor. Well, Alan, I guess you'll be over here to watch him rehearse. <laughs> I have two more questions for you. Of course. Did he, before he died, follow anybody home? Yeah, but not very often. I mean, he would uh, he would follow them down the parking lot, or or he would follow them down the street. Sometimes he would follow them all the way home, and he would just stand at the end of their driveway. Okay, well that brings me up to this. Uh, well, we had a some sort of entity at my house, and uh, my friend Alan here he recorded an EVP session, and it referred to the church, and we were wondering if. It came from here. Uh, most likely, yeah. And last question. How did he die? Well, he hung himself. Really? Yeah, actually, right, uh, right above the baptistry. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh. I didn't really want to get too graphic with this part. The pastor telling Scott that the man 12 years earlier had hung himself. I didn't really want to put too much detail into that. There's already enough detail in there as it is to have it really be thematic. And then have a little girl come in and, you know, see it. Yeah, that, that, was enough, that was enough detail already. What was strange, though, is that there was no stepladder or nothing under him. It was just a, a wire tied to a hook in the ceiling. Wait for me. So what do you think for your first investigation? It's kind of interesting. You want to be uh, upstairs or downstairs? Outside. <laughs> it's not that bad. Even said, it's harmful. I use this little effect right here, Statica, uh, in a lot of a lot of the scenes uh, as I did earlier, and uh, I just used it a lot because it was just such a great effect for camera usage. Actually made it look like a real documentary film. Green room. We're just gonna walk through. And that stepping in the background you just heard, that's actually a uh, Cody Hermler sound guy. He was actually just walking. That wasn't actually scripted. That actually uh, gave me the idea of just putting that there. I didn't want to stop because once I was looking, I was like, oh, okay, we can include that. And also the grainage that you see on there, all the sort of pixelated static is a uh, was actually not 
any effect I put into the film that was actually already with the camera. <laughs> we used a Canon camera, and it, it worked really well. This, however, I really wish we had found more powerful lighting, just the flashlights in general. I really wish we had a night vision, or just like really bright flashlights, because all we see is a little circle in the middle, but actually, once I looked over that and put more effects on it, actually turned out that that made the film even more suspenseful. You don't really know what you're looking at. I thought it could give the audience a little bit more uh, a gut feeling that something was going to happen and you don't even know how or what, it's gonna, what they're going to see and how quickly they're going to see it and uh, how far away it's going to be. This was by accident, lowering Jimmy Tuff's voice, who's playing Alan Smithy. <laughs> that was actually an accident. I tried my best not to include his voice of being deeper. I tried to lift the pitch up, but then he just sounded like a Pinocchio. And I, I just, I had to keep it a deep. He asked me, dude, did you really just deepen my voice? I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I couldn't fix it in any way. What could have made this part more realistic is I could have walked towards the water fountain which I was going to do, but I didn't really know how I was going to actually picture or have the water fountain actually going. Three, up to lock up. Are you drinking from the fountain? Is that why it's going off? And Cody Hermel, who was the sound guy who was actually right behind me the whole time I'm shooting this, but I couldn't really turn my camera that way, so I had to keep on turning my camera towards the window. I heard you like to run up and down the stairs and make a lot of noise. Why don't you... This scene right here, this is the last scene uh, Cody Hermel was with us. Every single time I scheduled a shooting day, he's just he had too much on his schedule because of his his uh, parents already had the stuff planned, or he had or they changed his plans and he had to go do this one day. So I'm like, okay, Kurt, Cody, you know you did enough. I'm just gonna uh, continue on because I really want to get this done. And sorry, but the only way this is gonna happen and get done is if we're just gonna have to do it without you. Okay, let's sit in the middle here and see what we can get out of an EVP session. All right, wait, 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 hang on. What? Uh, I'm thinking my flashlight's out. Are you kidding? No. Uh, didn't you put any batteries in it? Yeah, I put the batteries in it right before we got here. Okay, well, let's just let's just deal with one for now. Uh, okay, let's sit here. I feel like I should have probably shrunk this conversation because it just it just took way too dang long. Is this where you died? This conversation actually came with footage, but I just had to take the audio out because the footage was not really good. Um, it was all about lighting. I did, all I had was the flashlight. He didn't have a flashlight. With the lights off, he turned towards me and he could barely see the light, or see me rather, and it didn't really look night vision. Of course, the whole thing doesn't really look night vision because all we're using is flashlights. Did you hang yourself? I heard that you uh, hung yourself above the very spot I'm sitting. And that you were seen for the first time by a little girl. I can't imagine how traumatic that was for her. Seeing a dead body for the first time. Why did you kill yourself? I'm getting chills, holy crap. I'm sweating over here. How can you be a possibility of getting chills? I don't know, it's just cold in here. It's not cold in here. Dude, look at your arm hairs. Dude, look at your, look at your arm hairs. Check your arm hairs. Yeah, look at it. They're standing up. Are you touching my friend over here? 
Is that why he's getting so cold? Why don't you scratch him, hit him or something? Don't do that. Come on. Come on, scratch one of us. Let us know that you're here. That was loud. Yeah, that was loud. That, that scared the shit out of me. You know what? Um, maybe we should split up. We could just get a lot so more. I don't have a flashlight. Okay, let's set your camera back on uh, normal vision. Just set it on the floor and out in the hallway with your EVP quarter. Okay. Alright. Okay. I'm gonna head in the. And the scene coming up here, a really bright screen like this right here. Yeah, I apologize if that was too bright and you couldn't really see anything, but there wasn't really anything I could do. I tried to fix the effects and everything, but the effects just made it worse and I couldn't go back to undo it because I had already clicked undo so many times that I couldn't go back any farther. So I had to get stuck with this. I just heard somebody call my name. There actually was supposed to be an alternate scene in between me opening the door and Jimmy coming around that corner. Uh, there was supposed to be like him walking down that hallway and then a shadow figure following him, but uh, there, we just didn't have a lot of time to film it. I figured that'd be typical. Actually, Alan, hey, would you, you take the camera? That door should be locked. The pastor said, right before he locks up, he locks up every single door. Before he locks up the main doors. Come here. That door should not be open. Right about there is when I put in three different shots. There's the floor, there's the door, and there's the shadow figure, which is, oh, like I said earlier, that's me right in the background there. Ow, ow! No, man, no, I'm not dealing with this. Dude, I've been through worse. I was trying to be locked in the basement with no one but the thing that likes to scratch. We get the camera and we'll go downstairs. And right there we had to cut, and then uh, there's me right there. So that took a lot of uh, editing and uh, special effects to get that scene just right. Whoa. Dude, I just have this like, cold rush of air that just come through me, dude. Alright, dude, I'm, I'm starting to get this really bad stinging sensation on my arm. What a real missing. We actually took a pen and uh, just drew on uh, Jimmy's arm. We couldn't really, we couldn't really do anything about it. We had to put something on his arm, otherwise, just be a big white blob, and people say, "Well, I don't see anything." Had to put something there. Did you hear that? Yeah. I'm pretty sure your camera and equipment got that. Okay, so let's continue on. Here, grab the camera. You all right? That little gasp you heard. I actually, it, I actually uh, hit my thigh on the right, just right on the corner of a step. That really, really hurt. I could walk, but I could just barely walk. Later on, you can see me limping a little bit. Scott. Scott, where are you? You all right, man? You don't look so good. No, I'm, I'm fine. I had an idea of slowing it down, and uh, as you see right back in the background there, uh, there are a bunch of glass cups, because uh, when we got there, there were just a bunch of blankets and cups over there uh, downstairs. I'm like, okay, I don't really know what's going on, so I had to grab another table that wasn't really a part of it, come and bring it over here. Scott, are you alright, dude? That table actually flew quite a bit a ways away. <laughs> I did not expect it to be that light. 
like I said earlier, uh, I just thought that that picture of it slowing down and you seeing me just dozy a little bit, I thought that would be a pretty cool effect. People get the idea, uh oh, something's happening to him. As you saw right there with me walking across the screen with uh, Alan just hiding behind uh, the stage, you can actually see me uh, limping. Scott? Actually, I had to cling a bunch of hangers together, and he pointed that direction because I had to run from that uh, area right there uh, to the other side of the hallway so I could have uh, whistled. Yes, we have had some here in the night, I don't think it's anything that anyone should be worried about. It's been harmless. And right there, we see me with a bunch of uh, black makeup on my face. We actually had to drive back to Jimmy's house because uh, um, we didn't really have makeup or anything. That was the most brutal part of filming that whole movie was the makeup. And this is my little story about the makeup. We had to drive back to Jimmy's house, grab a marker. He had a, he had a couple of uh, washable markers, and we broke it, and we rubbed it all over my face, around my eyes, around my mouth. It sort of gave me a little Joker look. Oh, jeez, that stuff burns like crazy. Like, dude, we had to film this quick because my eyes are starting to water and it's going to drip right all the way down my face. But, uh, yeah, that's that. Hope you guys enjoyed the film. I don't know how long it'll be until I film my next one. It'll probably be until after I graduate college, uh, which will be quite a while. I'm Curtis Pickford, and I am the director and producer and writer of Twisted Edges. And hope you guys had a great time watching the film. Hope you can get to see my next one.